Here on this second Sunday of Easter, only a week after one of our biggest celebrations of the year, it may seem a little strange to be confronted with fear and doubt as we meet the disciples huddled together in a room behind locked door on that evening of the first day of resurrection. Maybe we find ourselves wondering why they're afraid. Wasn't it just earlier that day that Mary Magdalene told them of her encounter with the risen Jesus? Why aren't they responding to the good news that they've just received with joy, excitement, exuberance? I mean, they've been told that the one that they've learned from for the past three years, the one they upended their lives to follow, their teacher and their Lord, lives. But really, the last thing the disciples expected to see was Jesus in their midst. For them, at least at this given point in time, Hope was lost. Jesus was dead, crucified on the cross. And even though some of them had seen the empty tomb, and even though others told them they had seen Jesus touched and spoken with Jesus, this was not enough to convince them. Their expectations, it seems, were informed by what they saw unfolding around them, their imaginations unable to conceive of anything different, in turn giving way to fear and doubt. So they gathered behind a locked door, unsure of what was next. But what was next was Jesus in their midst surpassing all their expectations and speaking directly to their fears and their doubts. Jesus comes to the disciples gathered behind a locked door and standing there among them says, Peace be with you. And this greeting of peace is extended to the disciples not once, but twice an assurance of peace that would have reminded the disciples of the words that Jesus spoke to them at their last supper just nights before, where he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Then add, Thomas to the mix, the one who has become known as Doubting Thomas. We're confronted with fear and doubt again as we meet Thomas, who is less than convinced by the testimony of the other disciples after the risen Jesus appears to them. He just can't seem to wrap his head around this, even when all his trusted friends have assured him of who they'd seen. But when the risen Jesus comes among the disciples a week later, this time when Thomas was with them, his greeting, it remains the same. Peace be with you. Again, Jesus is offering an assurance to help dispel fear and doubt. This time, going as far as to invite Thomas to put his finger in the wounds of his hands, to reach out his hand and put it in the wound in his side. And in both cases, with the disciples that first night and with Thomas a week later, this assurance of peace extended by Jesus comforts the disciples and moves them to recognition and belief in the resurrection. 
Now you and I, the living church, we hold on to the witnesses of the disciples as told here and elsewhere in Scripture. We hold on to their testimony, they having seen the risen Jesus firsthand. We're the ones who Jesus is referring to when he says to Thomas, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And yet. And yet, so often, our expectations are dictated by the circumstances that we find ourselves in, as opposed to the promises of Jesus. And like the disciples gathered that first night of the resurrection, we find ourselves wrestling with fear and with doubt more often than we'd like to admit. Fear of having enough in retirement. Fear of losing a loved one to illness. Fear of failing as a parent. Doubtful that we've got what it takes to be the boss, be a good friend, make it through exams. The list goes on. And in those times when we find ourselves moored in fear and doubt, it can feel as though Jesus is far from us, that we have to go it alone. But the good news is that no matter what we're experiencing, what we're feeling, or where we are in our journey with Christ, the resurrected Jesus is with us. When Jesus showed up to the disciples, he stood among them. He was literally at the center of their little gathered community. The same is true for us today. Jesus is at our center. And as the church founded in Jesus, we are invited to live as those whose expectations are caught up in the promise of the resurrection. The promise that Jesus is always with us. What would it look like to live as those whose expectations are caught up in this promise? It would be to expect the peace that comes from Christ alone. This doesn't mean that fear never shows up or that we don't struggle with doubt. But it does mean that we can have the courage to say, my Lord and my God, even in or perhaps especially in the midst of challenge and struggle, There's this song by singer Angie McMahon. It's called Divine Fault Line. And the chorus goes like this. And, and anyone who knows the song, I'm changing one word to give it a PG rating. It says, you're on your own dark side of the border tonight. And you're all messed up. And you're wanting to die. And that's the place where the breaking out begins. It's the divine fault line opening. Now I hear the word divine with a capital D, an opening up of the presence of the divine here and now, allowing for something new to happen. I hear this as the promise of resurrection at work, that no matter what, we can expect that Jesus is indeed showing up in our midst through the presence of the Holy Spirit breathed into us, that you and I are living Easter, 
Because Easter isn't something that's locked in the past, simply an event that happened long ago. Easter is alive, and we are living it. A faith that is present even in the face of doubt. A hope that brings us through fear. A peace that dwells deep within us, even in the presence of conflict, and a courage that empowers us to share what we have seen and heard as we learn to follow Jesus. So let's dare to live Easter, my friends. Let's dare to trust that resurrection is at work in us and in the world. I can't say for sure what this is going to look like or how it's going to play out, but it sounds a lot better than living huddled up in a room behind a locked door.